Alrighty folks, this is Tom from anti-proton.com and I thought it might be interesting today to look at a piece of uranium under a gamma scintillator but a really good piece of uranium too, one that's somewhat hot. As you know, pieces of uh, depression glass like this, and hey, for the record, I didn't call it Vaseline glass this time. I don't know why, but I, I always call depression glass Vaseline glass and I know it's not Vaseline glass. I, I just... It's one of those... Uh, um, uh, things like like uh, uh, February. February is actually is actually spelled Feb February, but everybody says February. It's one of those things. I just have a tendency to call it that. But anyway, this depression glass is colored with uranium. So here is some natural uranium. Let's see if I can put this up so you can see it. It's not the most beautiful piece of uranium ever made. It's sort of ugly, actually. And it's from United Nuclear. And it is, well, relatively radioactive. Let's cut the sound down. This is not ca capturing ga uh, gamma, of course, because of the fact that the plastic is over the front. In fact, the bag itself is probably enough to actually block the rays. Well, let's see if you can even see that. Hmm. 9,000? Oops, yeah. Yeah, so it's nine, ten thousand counts a minute, somewhere in there. Ten thousand. Now, let's pull this away and put it back. And let's turn on this guy. Put it on the times one mode. Let's see what kind of gamma we get. Let's first off be sure that you can see this. In fact, I'll pick this up put it where you can see it. We're looking at 250 counts per minute gamma. With the beta shield open, it's all the way over. So let's go to times 10. And as you can see, It's thinking two or three thousand times. And of course, this guy right here is less than one third as sensitive as the inspector, so that's not really too far off of reality. Now, if you just bring back from it a couple of feet, it gives you 300, and if I put the, the counter all the way back here by the, by the camera, we start dropping down to a more realistic figure less crazy. So as you see, distance makes a big difference with shielding. Pointed right at it. I'm getting 170. 144, it's dropping. For the record, so is the Geiger counter. It looks like it's about to fall over. 90, so somewhere under 100. So let's slap this in the scintillator and see what we get. Alrighty, folks. Let's see what we can do with a little uranium. First off, let's establish a background. Let's change our mode to multi-channel scaling. And in multi-channel scaling mode, each one of these channels that you see along the bottom here, these 1,024 channels, each one of them will equal, let's see here, what do we want to set it to? One second. No, let's make it a little bit shorter. Let's say one-fifth of a second. So 200 milliseconds. <laughs> Spelling error. Look at that. Well, anyway, so each one of these channels, what will happen is the, the, the unit will, will go to each channel and it will count as many gammas as it can find in 200 milliseconds and then it will go to the next channel and then 200 milliseconds worth in the next channel. And so we'll get a line across here of approximately what our background is. Let's start everything up. Now, the very fact that I have the uranium near me, even though it's not in the scintillator, means that right off the bat my readings are going to be higher than they would be if the uranium were not present. And as you can see, as it spits along, we're looking at uh, like 3, 4, let's call it 2 times 5 is 10, so 10 per second. 
It's about 600 counts a minute. Now let's drop the uranium in and see what we get. Dropping the uranium in. Whoa! Let's check each side of the uranium and see if one side is better than the other. This side. Alright, turning it to this side. Now look at that, you can actually tell when I'm turning it. Okay, that side's probably the hottest. So let's put the top on the scintillation device. Oops. Hmm. Make sure that rock is not injuring the scintillator in the conceivable way. And let's put the top on the scintillator. Whew, that is heavy. Okay, so there we go. Now, as you can see, in a mere few seconds here, I don't know how many seconds we've done so far. Was it 92 seconds? You've gotten a pretty good baseline. Now we're at um, four or five hundred counts per minute. It's almost exactly the same as the Amarecim 241 sample I had tested recently too. Similar amount, but interestingly enough, this large rock of uranium is putting off about the same amount of gammas as the uh, one third of one microgram of Amory Seam 241. That should give you an idea of the difference in specific activity, although that's a little anecdotal, but regardless. All right, let's stop this thing. Clear this and switch our mode to pulse height analysis, which is what we care about, where each one of these channels is equal to a certain number of kilo electron volts. And as they go up, we will see patterns form that will, that will allow us to identify what isotopes are in the uranium. Currently, um, if you look carefully over here, I'm in the um, x squared y axis. What that means is, instead of each line in the y axis equaling one number higher, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, and so on, each value is, e is a function of x squared. So it curves rapidly. If you've ever seen x squared, it kind of like curves rapidly. So from this point to this point is 16 counts, but from this point to this point is, is 16 to 256. From here to here is 256 to 4,000 and so on as an exponential curve. The other mode I'll show you when I click over here is the linear view. In the linear view, I have a side scrolling thing on this side here, which I can adjust. And as I adjust it, it'll adjust with these equal and they're linear all the way up. So one to eight for here but then another 8 gets to 16, then another 8 gets to 24, and it's exactly 8 steps all the way up. If I change this little side scroller here, let's change it to halfway up. Now we're going from 30 to 45,000, so that's 15,000. Then about the same to here, about the same to here, about the same to here, about the same to here. And I can scroll this all the way up to exactly the same as the other mode's maximum, which is up to 16 million. Okay, so you get the idea. We're going to start, though, in the logarithmic view with the x squared. All right, let's turn on our calibration. I currently have this set yet again, like I like to do, so that each channel is equal to one kiloelectron volt. It's plus or minus uh, down in this range, plus or minus three kiloelectron volts. Up in this range, you can go up to plus or minus five kiloelectron volts in error. And that's good enough for isotopic analysis and the detail that I'm doing. Okay, so let us now click Accumulate. Oops, there, you can see a little better. As you can see, immediately, immediately it becomes obvious what's going on. These, uh, these four fingers here, I like to call these the four fingers of uranium. Natural uranium always has these four little guys right here, and they're mostly caused by uh, um, uh, lead-214, but there's some other things, and I'll talk about those in just a minute. I'm not going to go on very long with this analysis. Now, what I am going to do is, let's see, am I going to let these, I'll let these guys build for a short time so you can see what they look like. Let's switch to the other mode. Ooh, look at that, we've already overscaled our, our, our little piddly little 1 to 64 counts here. It's too low, so let's scale up a little. As this bar goes up, each line here is equal to more and more change in Y. There. This is the same as this, but because the scales, it 
makes this a little bit smoother. I like this one because it gives you more accurate distribution of how high things are. That right there, I can tell you for the fact, those X-rays, X-rays that we get when the beta and alpha and so on fly out of the uranium and slam into the detector, mostly beta. That's what those are, X-rays. Okay. Look at that go. Now, let's see if we can do a little isotopic analysis. We'll cut on the peak finder and see what we get. Right off the bat, let's look at these. Down here in the um, 13 range, let's see right there, 13. 13 kiloelectron volts is kind of a golden number for um, uranium. Let's change the scaling, we're already out of it. 13 is where every conceivable thing you could ever imagine shows up. Uranium-238 is 13.6 kiloelectron volts. Uranium-234 is 13, uh, is, uh, 13 kiloelectron volts. Thorium-234 is 13.3. Thorium-230 is 12.3, and so on. There's huge numbers of things that exist right here. So this is almost dis discountable for this unit because the sensitivity of my unit is not such that it can accept these really, really low energy photons with too much trouble. So let's look at these guys right here. These are full peaks. They're nicely formed peaks. As you can see when you look at them here, they're a little bit more nicely formed. And right off the bat, I keep saying right off the bat, 187 kiloelectron volts. Well, I know that the primary photon for radium-226 is 186.1. So nine, nine tenths of one kiloelectron volt, that's not very much error. So this is almost dead on for radium-226. And I already know uh, that this is radium-226. This is a very a fairly standard spectrum for people to test. The this and cesium-137 are very commonplace test, uh, uh, test uh, spectrums for students and so on. They just jumped down to 186. So that's almost absolutely dead on. Next guy over here is uh, 240, oops, 241. 241.98 is one of the gammas for lead 214. So this is definitely a lead 214. I'm saying definitely. I've actually spent lots of time on uranium samples testing these things, and I know that these what these four fingers here are, and these four photo peaks. So as I just proclaim that they're definitely without doing any real analysis, it's because I already know that that's what they are. Normally I spend a lot more time when I don't know what a peak is trying to figure out what it is. 293 is pretty close to 295.21, which is another two, lead 214. Lead 214, by the way, is a very, very, very uh, uh, powerful gamma emitter within uranium, natural uranium, and you'll almost always find it. All right, and lead 214, I might add, is also a decay product of, of radium, natural, uh, not natural, but radium, the way people use in their uh, wa watches and stuff. If you get one of those old West Clock, watches or one of those watches, you know, from Grandpa and whatnot, you're going to find most of these guys in there too. All right, and this last guy right here, 351, 351.92 is the primary lead 214 gamma. So right, 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 uh, immediately you can see that you have radium 226, lead 214, lead 214, lead 214, all the way down. As for this guy right here, 586, 586 is pretty close to 609, which is bis bismuth 214, another powerful gamma emitter. In fact, 609 is right here. That's 609 right there. So my calibration is off by, let's see, I think realistically speaking, let's see where the dead center of that is. All right, the dead center is probably somewhere right around 589. So 90 is 10, 16. I'm off by 17 kiloelectron volts. That's actually pretty high. I'm usually not off by that much. So I'm, I'm a little off right here. My calibration may even be worse than the high numbers than I thought. But that's okay. 
I have various calibrations for various things, and I know exactly what this is. I happen to know that this is bismuth 214, so I will tell you that's bismuth 214, even though this isn't showing up right. And by the way, given time, when this peak grows higher and higher, this will become more and more accurate. All of these will, as more and more of the um, uh, gamma show up. Alrighty, so there you go, folks. Natural uranium all the way across. Neat. Alrighty. Well, this has been Tom from anti-proton.com. Enjoy.